Meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are here to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world he has made, who loves us, though we have failed in his service, who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, who by his Holy Spirit leads us in his way. As we give thanks for his great works, we remember those who have lived and died in his service and in the service of others. We pray for all who suffer through war and are in need. We ask for his help and blessing that we may do his will and that the whole world may acknowledge him as Lord and King. Try to grow perfect, help one another, be united, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. As we stand in silence, let us recall the presence of God, the Father of all humankind, maker and sustainer of all that is, whose love is never withheld, and whose mercy never passes away. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Most, Most merciful God, God Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly Love mercy, and, and walk, walk humbly with, with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from Daniel, chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St Mark. Chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. 
As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, there will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. The Rappi Fall in 1914 to 1918, Percival Edwin Archer, James William Ball, William Ball, Frank Beddle, Job Lee Leonard Brown, Arthur Dumford, Francis George Hall, Tom Parrott, Gilbert John Henson, 
Ernest Hirons, Joseph Albert Johnson, Cecil Marvin, Harold Marvin, Donald Johnson Pickard, Lewis Arthur Reeves, John Wellwell Ruddle, Albert Shipman, John Bowman Siddons, Everard Sutton, George Alfred Tarrant, Samuel P. D. Thompson, C. W. Whitmore, and Edward Wright. George William Ashby, James Ball, James F Belcher, William Biddle, Ernest William Bookmaster, Claude Grudgins, Joseph Harrop, William Harrop, George William Hill, Leonard Hurd, William K. Lee, George William Marvin, George Harry Mott, Thomas William Preston, jo John Theodore Richardson, Charles Henry Saunders, da Daniel Herman Siddons, Colin Kinton Smith, Robert Douglas Sutton, Kenneth Clark Thompson, Ernest Henry Watts, William Woodward, John Wrightson. The rat before the 1939-1945. Albert Richard Champra, Arthur R. Flint, Jack Leonard Leslie Lovegrove, William Thomas Maids, Wil Wilfred Muir, Walter Plant, Joseph Tidbisley. Eric Lewis Elverston, Albert Le Leslie Jordan, William Morris, Arthur Plant, William Thompson Preston, George William Moore. The Rap Before an Afghanistan Conflict 2007, Private Christopher Gray. Those who fell in the First World War J. Ball, G. H. Burdett, T. R. Burdett, C. G. Finney, H. W. Henstock, H. Ingram, J. H. Overton, E. C. Saunders, G. H. Smith, S. Storer, K. C. Thompson, S. L. Warder, J. Wood, L. Brotherhood, J. W. Bedet, H. Clark, G. Gillett, D. Hyde Thompson, H. W. Little, W. W. Preston, T. A. Slingsby, W. Spencer, W. Spear, S. P. D. Thompson, W. Watson. Those who fell in the Second World War. J. W. Bramley, R. Bramley, E. P. Clements, A. Cooper, G. Griffiths, J. Griffiths, S. Hall, K. J. Palmer, S. Percival, J. A. Pickard, J. H. Richards, W. R. Rodwell, H. Storer, W. J. Watts. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. They shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. For the going down of the sun, in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
the words and say, for your tomorrow, we gave we gave you our today. Ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 May I speak in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer. And may our hearts and minds be transformed by our encounter with the living word of God. Amen. Today, we remember those who have died in war. 40 million in World War I and 75 million in World War II, we may particularly remember today. But let us remember all those who have died in conflict. For sadly, war remains a part of our lives and millions have died in conflict since those world wars. Poignant for some of us are the over 200,000 who died in the conflict in Afghanistan. But of course, conflicts continue today across the world. The Mexican drug wars claiming over 200,000 lives. The Boko Haram insurgency over 350,000 lives. The Syrian civil war over 500,000 lives. Darfur over 300,000 lives. The Kivu conflict over 100,000 lives. The Yemeni civil war over 233,000 lives. And more still dying in all these conflicts and others. In amongst all that we know that is going on in the world, and the awareness that there is so much besides that we may not know of. We read this passage today in Mark's Gospel, Jesus' own apocalyptic warnings, and I'm sure we cannot help but wonder if this is it, the beginning of the end. And so does that word apocalypse scare you? We tend to think of it as, as being all about the end of times. But in fact, what apocalypse actually means is a revelation of knowledge, a disclosure of that which was previously unknown. And that doesn't have to mean the end of all things. So perhaps we need to read this passage not so much as divine prophecy in which we are now living, but first and foremost as speaking into the reality of the community for which it was first written revealing that Jesus knew the trials his church would face. The Markan community that first held this gospel saw firsthand what Jesus spoke of. They knew the violence of war, knew of the destruction of the temple, the perilous state of the persecuted early church, alongside enticing voices of false prophets that led people astray. But of course, this passage speaks as much to us today. The reality for us as inheritors of the Christian communities of the past and living with the same fears and uncertainties today. I think this passage contains three key elements. The first is that we are called to develop a spirit of discernment. We know that there is opposition within and without and that we need to be careful that we are not led astray. There is so much going on in our world and so many competing voices. And we need a spirit of discernment to find what is right and good and true. That which is born truly of love and care for one another and builds up community. The next thing that we need to remember is that we need patience. Do not be alarmed. So we need to take the long view, not getting overexcited about each and every event, and nor when we are active against evil and even defeated in one guise, not to be disillusioned when the next evil rears its ugly head. The calendar of all things is in God's hands. But we of course must strive as best we can in all of the battles that we face, perhaps Poignant at the moment is the battle that we all face against climate change, as well as the coronavirus pandemic. 
Let us pray that these are battles that we will win for the sake of all. Because we need to remember that also in this passage is an invitation to hope. All that happens to the Markan community, to our community, is worldly chaos. And the objective view may see little cause for hope. But this very chaos is seen as the beginning of the birth pangs. What an image! No denial of the current pain and the suffering that we endure, but out of the pain, in the economy of God, comes the birth of new life. The sufferings lead not to despair, but to the hope of the dawn of God's new day. That very hope is expressed in our reading from Daniel as well. A reminder that we who may be lost can shine as lights forever. Just as we remember those who have died, so we read their names and they are remembered, for they have shone as lights and examples to us, bringing hope of a new future. And it is in that future which we live, and it is our task to fight the battles of today, that the generations to come may live in a new and hopeful future. And we hold in all of this our hope through Jesus Christ, for that is the true name of hope. The sacrifice of Christ is what even the most abject foolishness of humanity allows forgiveness. Whatever we have got wrong, through what God has done in Jesus Christ on the cross, we can be forgiven. But in the enormity of all around us, we must not forget all those numbers of dead that I quoted earlier. They are not just numbers and statistics on a page. I use the word lives when I describe those lost to war. For each and every person lost is a life lost. Someone loved by friends and family who mourn their loss. And God mourns too. For each and every person is made in the image of God and beloved of God. God is intimately interested in and part of their story, whether they know it or not. That is why Jesus came to earth to be an intimate part of our human story, showing his love by being a part of our story. He is a part of our story as we are a part of his. And it is our hope and prayer that we may live through these troubled times to the birth of a new age where there will no longer be the need for war and we may find the ways of being gentle and kind and loving with one another for a brighter future. We remember today so that we may look forward to a new future filled with hope just as those who died for us have tried to create and the many who continue to do so today. Their sacrifice should not be in vain, for if we may learn those lessons, we may strive always for God's kingdom, one that is filled with justice, mercy, love and peace, out of bloodshed, May this new kingdom be born, in which peace may reign forever. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict, and ask that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God, may God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our Amen. prayer. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss, may God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. May God give peace, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity, may God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace, may God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope now and for ever. Amen. Amen. And we join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellows, that we may help, encourage and comfort others, and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? We will. Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? We he will. will. Will you work for a just future for all humanity? We, we will. will. Merciful God, we offer you the fears in us which have not yet been cast out by love. May we learn to accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people. And may we live lives of justice, courage, and mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be upstanding for the National Anthem. the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us all, God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you, and all whom you love, now and always. Amen. Amen.